So hello dear viewers, this is 2022 and here's what a feature phone looks like these days. Well, to be fair, these two phones are a bit older, pre-pandemic design. That sounded way too dystopian, didn't it? Well, anyway, here, th here they are, the Allview M9 and the Eboda T310 or T310. So let's start with the Allview. This has become a rather well-known brand with a respectable, if modest, reputation, in my country at least. Gone are the days when off-brand gadgets were just cheap feeling and cheap looking toys that didn't actually provide you with the experience that was advertised or expected of them. Back in 2010, for example, a Chinese branded phone would just rip apart in your hands right after purchase. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that you would be lucky if the battery didn't blow up in your hand or if the housing plastic did not scratch or cut your skin. These two though, these two though are actually of exemplary fit and finish, but I will discuss build quality later on. For now though, the unboxing and let's start with the all view. The packaging itself is modern and sleek because sort of, you know, the box is made smaller, uh, it fits, the phone fits snugly inside of it and I'll just put the device here for a moment. Um, disregard this dust and, uh, well, um, torn packaging because actually this is a brand new device, was, was not used. Here is the warranty. It's a cheap looking, uh, no, actually this is the, <laughs> this is the bill that came with it. Never mind that. Here is a, don't know, an inter international warranty, uh, which has not been filled in. I don't know if you can see this, there's all sorts of barcodes and stuff like that. Uh, stamping, uh, which, sort of warrants the phone. I'll just put this away and let's see what we have here. Well, this is nice, a brand new headset, hands-free headset with only one headphone, but still sufficient for calls, if not for listening to MP3s. This is the USB cable. I shall not be opening it as I have an additional one. This is a micro USB unit and the charger brick. Also unused. I keep it as a backup in case my other bricks fail. So nice though, this is 2015 and you did not have issues whether you are getting a complete package with your phone or not. Um, none of that save the world monarchy, which uh, supposedly uh, saves uh, resources by not including uh, uh, basic features in your packaging, but actually saving money to the OMs, to the uh, um, to the phone uh, manufacturer. So thoughts on the M9. It was launched in 2015. It costs, that's a rather uninspiring sound. <laughs> so thoughts on the design and detail. It was launched in 2015. Right now it costs about 25 to 30 euros, so quite cheap. Uh, and it's no surprise, it's a rather cheap feeling phone as well. But not by much. If I were to compare it with an older model from an established feature phone maker from Yor, like Nokia, I would say this is a mid-upper range, but a rugged device, a sort of 5 series nondescript design, uh, an updated 5220, if you will. Functionality though, is not its strong point, so let's just try to turn it on. Um, turns right up, that's nice, has a decent battery in it. 
Functionality though it's not a strong point, neither is menu usability, is not intuitive or user friendly in any way, but oh my heavens how all of you did try to do this. It's baffling even considering that this is meant to be used by a person of a certain age with no proclivity towards high-end gadgets. It's counterintuitive and cumbersome to use, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, you don't really know how to block the screen or how to operate it. Maybe it's meant to be used two-handed like so. So that's why you get in the menu by pressing this <laughs> rather uh, cheeky um, Windows copying, uh, I don't know, icon template because it just looks like a Windows 10 template. You would be tempted to press it, but this is not a touchscreen device. You can also get into the main menu by pressing this middle D-pad but the keys themselves even for me are a bit small see if you, I press the center button I can mistakenly press the lateral ones and that the adjacent buttons also so for a person with big fingers maybe of a certain age I don't want to be rude but this is not a particularly easy to handle phone um, Also, also when it comes to features, the camera, I mean, really, do you need a camera at this price range? Let's try to do a photo. It's actually, you don't really, let me, I don't even know how to press the shutter button. So I don't know if it's this one or this uh, check mark here in indicating the the upper left button. Let's try with the D-pad. No, the D-pad records video, presumably. So what does this? Yeah, I, I really don't know. So let's try again. The D-pad, the upper left button seems to operate some settings for the camera while the middle one operates. Yeah, so there is a photo from the Allview M9 Join. By the way, this is called the M9 Join. And let me just hit you with some basic information. It's It was launched in 2015. It's a 2G and 3G phone. It's got a, LCD display uh, 240 by 320 uh, pixels so it's a QVGA unit it weighs around 84 grams and it's quite light in the hand it's got an 800 milliamp hour battery let me just open it up so I can show it to you it opens up quite in a basic rough, rough sort of uh, way but here is the battery. I don't know if you can see it. Let me just focus on it. Yes. And I shall attempt to remove it, but once I shut down the device, here is the battery. Eight hundred milliamp hour. And here is the inside of the phone. Not that it would matter, but there you have it. And looky here, it's a dual SIM with a micro SD card slot. So, pretty important features even back in 2015. And also, is a, it's quite resistant, so... Not consider, notwithstanding this well, rather cheap fit and finish and plastic. Um, the well, the build quality is rather resistant and confidence inspiring. Uh, you also get 64 megabytes of RAM memory and a vendor OS. I don't know what that is, but it's the operating system. 
So this is the Allview M9 join. I don't really get what why you would want a camera in a phone like this. In my mind, you buy this phone because you are either anti-smartphone or because you simply don't care to operate one or don't know how. Or maybe you like things simple and have a separate older digital camera with you, which you use to take pictures on vacations or what have you. In either case, older folks don't really need cameras on their feature phones. Either they have smartphones or maybe they operate digital cameras or they just plain don't care about pics. In either case, this mediocre snapper has no place here. Heck, put a flashlight, put FM radio, put a bigger battery on this phone, but not a camera, not really. The Eboda, on the other hand, is a more premium feeling device. Quite an unfortunate moniker, wouldn't you say? I always think of the infamous Ebola virus when speaking of this brand, though few in my country make this connection. Again, it's the same modest itineration to a more expensive or premium brand, although they tend to produce all sorts of devices, including some kitchen and house appliances. Think cheap Philips alternative. This phone, though, reminds me more of the 6 series Nokia, maybe the well-known all-conquering Golden Age 6310i or the all-business camera lacking E60. So let's have a look at the Eboda T310. The packaging is quite interesting. Again, minimalist design. Um, sorry to say I don't have the um, charger for this one, but I'm sure it came with a brick, a USB cable, and a headphone set with a jack uh, connector. Um, this is the warranty and um, yeah, the certificate of warranty. And uh, well, I must have taken the power brake to use for another phone or whatever. So let's put this away and concentrate on the phone at hand. Wonder if it still starts. The metallic finish is more classy, uh, though maybe less resistant to wear and tear compared to the Allview M9. A nice a nice touch is this blacked out bezel around the screen, sort of the way my SP65 looks, making the screen appear bigger than it actually is. As with the Allview M9, features and camera are a bit lackluster, though I would say that menus are more intuitive and well laid out compared to the M9. So let's have a look at them right now, if the phone will be willing to start. If not, I shall just be getting a charger. I have managed to connect a, a cable to this device. So here is the charger. Here is the phone actually charging and it has a reset clock, whatever. Let's try to turn it on. See what happens. Okay, so now it's going to turn on. Hopefully it will uh, go over that uh, startup sequence. Yes, reroute. So one thing to note, this rather annoying um, screen protector seems to dim the image quality quite by a lot, but I shall be rather uh, selfish and keep it on as I want to uh, preserve the value of this phone somewhat. I don't plan on, you know, on keeping it until it uh, appreciates in value because that will never happen. But I do want to keep it as new because maybe I will, um, I don't know, I will donate it to some person in need and I want to think that this, I want them to know that this phone is actually in mint brand new condition. 
so the menu is quite a lot more legible and uh, easy to work around than the M9. Then again, these, this uh, T310 it has quite a bigger screen than the M9. So let me just give you the specs. The M9 join has a 2.4 inch 167 pixel per inch screen, a TFT color display, though the Eboda has, wait for it, a 2.8 screen, a 2.8 inch screen but with the same QVGA 240 by 320 resolution. So yeah, they're basically the same thing, just the Eboda seems to be a bit more uh, premium, if you will. Um, the fit and finish is actually a bit more um, matured, if not uh, premium. Uh, the buttons are well laid out, uh, they're easier to operate, it's easier to hold in hand, and this metallic finish really complements it, though uh, you, you can't see this through the video, I don't think so, but it's actually just painted on. It's not quite that impressive to hold in hand, though from a distance, though from a distance it does look rather premium. Again, micro SD card. So let me just open up the device. I'll just switch it off, disconnect it. So if you want to open up this device, the battery cover is sort of flush with the body, the chassis of the device, but it's rather difficult to open up. And I'm afraid that this during um, long, uh, prolonged usage will lose its gap and start to fall out of of its own accord anyway this is the battery it's a 1000 milliamp power capacity yes and this is the inside of the phone have a look The writings on the wall, as we say. The writings on the wall, as they say. Dual SIM plus micro SD slot. Here is the battery. The 1000 milliamp hour unit, which is, well, a respectable amount of battery capacity. So let me just reassemble this thing and we'll get on with the review presentation whatever yeah nice and snug i don't know whether these phones are two different classes the m9 being the cheaper version but as of 2022 it's rather irre irrelevant since they both cost about the same in the 30 euro price range this is below bargain in my opinion. It's simply incredible. I mean, think about it. It's a dependable cell phone that literally anybody could afford. You could be fo you could be homeless and afford this phone. Well, that's taking it too far, I guess, but that's exactly my point. And I'm sure some folks that have it way rough are actually depending on these devices right now. I keep them as a backup. And this brings me to my next point. Having a dumb phone allows you cyber invisibility in 2022, at least at a basic level. No streaming, no social media, no nothing. Just pop in a 3G SIM card and you're good to go. Hopefully, you don't plan on engaging in nefarious activities this way. Well, that has been all for this episode, so thank you for watching and stick around as I shall be uploading several interesting techno bits from the past on a weekly basis. Cheers!